Hey guys, hope you're well. Wanted to tell you a story about my arrest for marijuana possession for a misdemeanor under an ounce marijuana possession, which usually Cobb County, the county that I got arrested in, doesn't necessarily prosecute for. So I'm thinking, and I want your counsel and your advice on this, I'm thinking that Scientology might have been responsible for my arrest. And I say might have been because I think there's maybe a 35% chance that they orchestrated uh, this kind of arrest that was shrouded in pretty unusual circumstances. So hope you'll enjoy this story. This all happened March 5th, not too long ago. And uh, yeah, I am, uh, I'm again, only 35% sure that Scientology was responsible for my arrest, but that's why I'm releasing this video. And I have been developing a relationship with my audience, getting to know a lot of you individually. So I'm thinking I will post this, post all the circumstances, and get your insight and get your opinion, and get your expertise. Particularly if there's anybody in the law industry, for example, that might be able to shed some unique expertise and shed a unique light on this. So I uh, figured I'd let you know. And again, apologies for not posting for a while. That's because I've been a little paranoid and wanting, and I've been wanting to get some distance away from the place that I got arrested from just so Scientology isn't on my case. But you'll be seeing a lot of newer videos from me. I'm going to uh, speak to Jacob Harkey as I get out to LA and cover more of the trial then. Uh, so there'll be a lot more action happening. I appreciate your patience, but wanted to talk about this and also get your opinion. And even if Scientology was not responsible, it's an interesting story to listen to because I'm also going to be describing kind of the fun details of my 16-hour incarceration as well as some notes on the flaws of the criminal justice system. I think if you want to be a journalist, one of the best things that you could do to be an effective journalist and really give a voice uh, to people who don't have a voice necessarily is to... Uh, is to experience the things yourself. And I always had a keen eye on criminal justice reform ever since I spent about uh, 24 hours in jail for hopping the, the uh, New York City turnstile. I'm also going to uh, pause for a second. Not that I care, but i uh, going to get rid of the uh, the mess in the background. Because some people, some people say it is distracting, but I like this intro, so I'm going to keep it and just do a little editing. Okay, hopefully that's much more acceptable. Um but yeah, so I, I, uh, I'll talk about the interesting jail experience, saw a guy get tasered, saw a lot of injustices, again, locked up for 16 hours. And I think Scientology, one of the re if Scientology is responsible for this, one of the reasons they did it is perhaps I think they're con they think that I'm concerned about my public image, especially being a former local news anchor, that I really care what people think, I really care about the image I'm upholding. The, the reality is I'm not. And I think to be a good journalist is to also be open about yourself personally. Uh, and uh, to say you're able to relate in the in the issues that you're covering with because you've kind of been there yourself. So, uh, you know, I, I, I will say uh, I got arrested for marijuana possession, so I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. Old quote from Mitch Hedberg. Uh, so I'm not terribly embarrassed that I, I do enjoy cannabis uh, and, and still do despite uh, my arrest. So I'll talk to you about what happened and uh, get your opinion on it. So... We'll start with a little background, uh, and I'm going to do some digestion of all the Chicago stuff. Uh, I was in Chicago on the 3rd of March to protest the Ideal Org opening. Obviously, there were a bevy of protesters, must have been about 30 to 40, even 50 altogether, so it's a very successful event. But I remember there was this one dude, he was also threatening Shannon and, and brought up a DUI that Shannon had, Shannon, Chicago Scientology audit. Uh, she brought up the one DUI that Shannon had and said she better be careful because we were thinking about even storming the stage when David Miscavige spoke uh, to really uh, make an interruption. Obviously, both of us would be arrested. So this dude who was one of the Scientology guardsmen, I guess, who was uh, at the uh, who, who was next to the barricade, the police barricade, the, the wooden uh, stanchion sign, whatever you call it, uh, that separates the main stage versus a few hundred feet from where that uh, protesters were allowed to be. So this guy goes right up to the wooden thing. And before he said to Shannon, you b better be careful. I know about your DUI. And then he said to me, he's like, Dodge, he knew my name. I was kind of honored. Like, oh, cool. I feel like a, like a bit of a celebrity. That's kind of awesome. And he said, hey, Dodge, I, I, you have warrants. And I didn't have any warrants. I'm like, that's weird. I said, warrants for what? And he said, you have warrants for crime. I said, oh, that's strange because I had some marijuana charges in the past that I paid the f fee for. That that time I did not get arrested. That was in Wyoming, which has equally as uh, restrictive laws. Uh, 
But so I thought that was kind of very funny and asked him which warrants. And he said for crimes and, and wasn't specific. And it was interesting because I was looking for this footage and both his threats to Shannon and, and, and his threats to me, when we were live streaming, both times the stream got cut out. So I don't know if the dude has a, a device, if you get super close to him, that the device shuts off your data or internet or something. It was very strange. So I don't have that, uh, but obviously have some many witnesses, uh, including Shannon, to back me up on him saying that. <clears throat> so I fly in Chicago. I'm, you know, traveling across country. I'm trying to get to L.A., not necessarily in a hurry, so stay, uh, staying in a bunch of different places along the way. And I flew out from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I was staying in the suburbs because I, I met uh, a friend like 10 years ago when I was in Atlanta. We were both at the uh, CNN Museum. So I want to hang out with her. She lived in the suburbs uh, in Marietta in Georgia. So it's Super Tuesday. I fly back home, uh, greet my dog, pick up the dog, and check in the hotel. And I'm doing a live stream of the Super Tuesday primary election, which was on March 5th, the night of March 5th. Flew in the night of March 5th, got in, checked in the hotel. Now I walked the dog. Now I'm doing the live stream. And in this live stream, I do mention where I was. I say that I'm in the suburbs of Georgia staying at a golf course. And there was only, now I'm doing this video because I'm far away from there at this point. But there's only one hotel in the suburbs of Georgia that is, uh, of Atlanta. I said the suburbs of Atlanta that is on a golf course. Uh, so I will say that in my live stream before I got arrested, if Scientology was paying attention, they would have been able to figure out precisely where I was. So this was, I started my live stream at about seven o'clock, finished it at about 11, uh, then went for a late night bite uh, at about 11 p.m., 11.30, drive to the car, I go to um, cookout, and then I come back and I want to listen to some more, uh, some more Super Tuesday coverage on the radio. I have Sirius XM radio. So, uh, and I also didn't want to necessarily smoke in the room. It was on the nicer, usually I stay at dumpier hotels. This is a nicer hotel, kind of want to be respectful. So uh, I'm listening to Super Tuesday results, smoking cannabis in my car. Uh, I'm in the end of the parking lot. This is a pretty isolated hotel. It's on a golf course uh, in a more isolated road away from the main road in Marietta in a suburb of Atlanta. So it's not like they're buildings all around to residents. It's a pretty isolated area. And I'm at the end of the parking lot. Nobody is disturbed. Nobody even knows that I'm smoking weed. Then all of a sudden I get this knock, knock on my car window. And the police officer is immediately pretty aggressive. His name is Officer Moore. And, and Officer Moore decided to follow me on uh, Facebook, I mean on YouTube, uh, because I thought that we had a friendly relationship. As, uh, reflecting on Officer Moore's actions, I could tell him. I don't hope he's not watching. If he is, he, he could go screw himself. The guy called himself a libertarian, but I'll explain to you how what he did was incredibly unlibertarian, whether he was ordered around by Scientology or not. Uh, so this Officer Moore knocks on my window pretty aggressively. And says, uh, sorry, I guess a uh, spring <sighs> temperature adjustment always has to be have a runny nose. So the the uh, police officer knocks on my door and he says, "Be honest, how much you have to, how much weed were you smoking?" And I say, I "Probably like a dime bag or something like that." And in this exchange, I'm respectful the entire time. I complete. I don't think I should have been. I should have called a lawyer, but I was being compliant the entire time. Uh, and, and even having a friendly rapport. So he asked me to get out of the car. He said, is there any more weed? And I said, I don't know. There, there very well could be uh, in the bottom of my car. And my car is so messy that I didn't know if there was weed or not. Uh, but I did not say there was no weed in my car. I said that it's entirely possible. It would be a similar amount to what to the bag that you found me with that's next to what I was smoking. So they already found like a, uh, like a, a, a dub sack of $20 worth of weed. Not, not a significant amount. I said there could be something similar. So they searched my car and they found something similar. And altogether, they must have found, uh, I want to say, a little under a quarter ounce of marijuana. Now, keep in mind, a felony conviction is an ounce or over. So I was not even close to being close. So all of a sudden, my legs were shaking and we're trying to establish a friendly rapport. And again, like, he seems like a good guy. And then I find out he's actually really not. Uh, but we're talking, we're talking about the election. Uh, he says he's libertarian. He likes Vivek Ramaswamy, which is interesting. Uh, and my legs are shaking because now the guy's really digging, finds the other weed, uh, and then he's like, oh, well, this is illegal, and then they put me in cuffs pretty much automatically. Uh, I start crying because, you know, it's a, I was like, sh the first thought was what the hell is going to happen to my dog? Um, and, you know, I, even though I, I'm a little hardened that I've been to jail, I'm certainly not a tough one in that regard. And, and, and the cops was like, oh, don't worry. It's like it's just a, me it's a mistake. All of these happens these things happen. I'm thinking in my head like a mistake, like I'm not hurting anybody and it's legal in half of the, half of the country. 
uh, and it's misdemeanor in, in the other half. So it was weird. He was trying to project to me as if, like, I, I assaulted somebody on a DUI or did something horrific or, uh, uh, or stole something. So it was, I didn't like the condescending, oh, it was just a mistake. Like, uh, some people would not view it as a mistake whatsoever. So when I'm in the police car, I notice Officer Moore. And Officer Moore would not give his, did not give his badge number, interestingly enough. So we'll talk about that later on as well. So I notice Officer Moore literally Googling mo wor uh, highest penalties you can face for under an ounce marijuana possession. Like looking to see what is the worst he can nab me on. Like literally, it's not, it wasn't a police site. This dude was, I saw it, the dude was literally looking on his little police laptop, Googling harshest offense for uh, under an ounce marijuana Georgia. Like, look at, like, trying, like, okay, where's, where's the bingo? Because it's not normal. I, and I later found out in hindsight, it's not normal, even in Marietta, Georgia, and Cobb County, outside of Atlanta, it's still not normal to arrest anybody for possession of under an ounce. So he, I could see him really grasping at, tr at straws and trying to find something to pinpoint me. Luckily for him, he does. They take me in, and as I'm being charged, he, we again talk about politics, and, uh, you know, he says how he's a libertarian. I'm thinking he didn't have to. I later realized in hindsight he didn't have to arrest me. So he's told what a novel idea. Uh, this guy is a fascist. He's not he's not a libertarian. In, in this. He's, he may as well be an employee of Bull Connor. Um, you know, talk about the old South. And it was funny. I was thinking about it as I got arrested, uh, how much this reminded me of. I was a fugitive from a chain gang, which is set in outside of Atlanta. So exact same setting. So I'm getting booked and processed. The guy is thanking me. He says how... Uh, uh, cooperative I've been, how that's so rare, uh, how only 10% of the people that he deals with are, are this polite and cooperative and, and how much he appreciated that. You know, I, and I'm thinking, oh, he's a nice guy. He had to take me in jail because that's what, that's what Cobb County does. They'll take, I assumed I was in a suburban county. I didn't look it up. Uh, he gave me only one minute to get key phone numbers. I couldn't text before they took my phone away. Uh, so yeah, so then I get the mugshot, as you could see. Or no, I didn't get the mugshot. First, I got uh, I get the mugshot much later. Uh, I get I get strip searched, so I have to you know pull up my wing and all that jazz. Uh, and um, they take my stuff and they put they put you in this big cell where there's about this big room where there's a bunch of little cells and in the middle of the room there's a TV and about I would say thirty other people, both men and women. So I desperately try to make a bunch of calls. There's bail numbers on the thing. I'm trying to call my parents, uh, not not worrying about it. And and I will say I was put at a disadvantage because I was super nervous, A, about getting bailed out. They said I had a $1,000 bail. But I was also nervous about my dog who was still in my hotel room. And I only had booked the hotel for the night of. I was going to check out the next day. So, and I remember I said to the officer, I said, do I need to make any extra calls? And he said, no, you'll be out of here before 10. 10 a.m. I got arrested at midnight. You'll be out of 10 a.m. guaranteed. You'll be out by 10 a.m. If you have the bail, you can get that. You don't need to book an extra night at the hotel. Your dog will be fine. You'll be out at 10 a.m. Guys, I was out at 4.30 p.m., uh, much later than 10 p.m. Again, got arrested at 12 a.m., was out uh, the next day at 4.30 p.m. Uh, so that was a complete blatant lie. And uh, a few notes on the justice system and, and the... Uh, uh, the peculiarities of it and the, the lack of uh, civil liberties that they employ. Uh, we are, you're supposed to have access to these phones the entire time until you get put up in this subsequent cell. What they have to do is they have to formally book you, which takes a very long time, take your mugshot, uh, and then you're, you're uh, transferred to another place. But until then, if you're in this bigger room, the only time you're in a smaller cell is when shift change happens and when the you know at 6 a.m when the previous shift team members employees uh go home and they have to take a moment to shift out well so we got put so we had i kept trying and trying and calling it i finally got into jail probably at 2 a.m at about 5 30 all of us are put in the little cell so there could be a shift change the problem was that one guy apparently smuggled in a cigarette and I could smell it, and because of that, we all got punished, and we were revoked our right to be in the main room, meaning that we didn't have access to the phone where we could try to get bail, for, and we were kept there in that smaller cell without access to any phone. Because of this one guy smoking a cigarette, we were kept there from 5.30 a.m. to about uh, 9.30 a.m. 
as a punishment. Uh, talk about something that's probably blatantly legal. Uh, you're, re you're revoking people's ability to try to actually pay the bail to get them out. Talk about blatantly, illegally denying people's civil liberties. Uh, and, and people are here for all kinds of reasons. One was for armed robbery. That was serious. One, there's a gentleman who I made good friends with uh, who um, his license was one day suspended. He's planning on getting his, he had an appointment to get his license renewed. And it's one day and then we're, here we all are uh, uh, with our civil liberties revoked with no tangible way to actually uh, uh, do anything. I did know, I did leave a note I did leave a message for my mom, and I asked my mom, uh, A, to bail me out, and B, to extend the hotel reservation for so that hotel people wouldn't throw the dog out. And even though the dog would have to be in the room for a super long time, at least he'd be safe and not put in a shelter. Um, so I, I have no idea what's happening. We're not giving, we're not, have been given any information whatsoever. And then finally at about 9.30, we're let out into the main room, and I asked somebody working in the main room what the deal is with my bail had anybody called and they said I didn't have a bail which I thought was very strange and the officer he told me it was a $1,000 bail but everybody else except me got a piece of paper explaining their charges a piece of paper with bold black letters saying this is what you're charged for this is the exact violation of Georgia penal code and this is the exact bail that you have to pay to get released every single other every other inmate aside from me, was given that list of charges. I was not. And I remember when I registered with Dr. Moore, he gave me uh, the initial paper, which has a court date, but didn't have the bail. So he gave me like a yellow piece of paper that he wrote out himself. But they're supposed to give you two different pieces of paper. He only gave me one. And it didn't outlaw, out, outline things nearly as much. And he even said to me, he even said to me, oh, oh, you'll be able to get my badge number. He didn't put it on. And, and I jokingly said, because I thought Officer Moore was just following the law, I said, oh, I don't think I'll need it. Now I wish I'll need it, and you know, maybe I'll sue his ass, or at least sue the department. Um, because it's, it's just weird what happened. So, yeah, a weird situation. So we didn't have access uh, to, to the phone for a long time. In, in, the, middle of the, uh, in the middle of the cell, one, one guy was saying he was in there because he accidentally rolled on his baby and suffocated her or jumped on the bed too hard and know the baby was there and caused serious damage. Uh, it seems like pretty unbelievable. One inmate did think it was unbelievable and got so mad he started punching the guy and like throwing down on him hardcore. So the, the jail employees were called and this one person ran in and this guy, he kind of felt like, I think he felt like he was defending children because uh, he was wailing on this guy in the moment these people came in. He still kept wailing and then he stood up and extended his arms like Jesus Christ, knowing what was about to happen. And then the jail employee tased him. Uh, and then he said, don't tase me, bro. He did not say that. But he did hang, he, he uh, extended his arm like Christ just to get tased and then brought down to the ground. So that was, a, I've never seen anybody get tased before. So that was a, a fascinating experience. But I think I was talking about the, the what happened with the bail. So at 9.30, we're all allowed back in the main room. And I asked the people, I said, well, they, they did say finally that my mother called and they told my mother that there was, that I didn't have a bail, that I was stuck there until I got to see the judge. And remember I got, uh, and you don't see the judge for like four more days. That's, that's a much longer process than just being able to pay the bail. The people at the front desk also gave me incorrect information because I knew nobody in Atlanta. They're like, well, you can't pay bail because somebody has to go and pay the bail for you. And I was like, well, can't, can't a bail bonds person do that? Don't you pay a bail? <clears throat> that's what my parents want to do. Don't you pay a bail bonds person to uh, do that? And they're like, no, you can't do that. So they're d directly telling me not to even try to get my parents to connect with a bail bond organization because I wasn't able to pay bail. You know, again, this is either some corruption with messages from on high or, which is equally as bad, a uh, 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 staff at the Cobb County Detention Center that knows nothing. And when residents and people when people want to be free and want to get the correct information to see how they can pay the people that they need to pay so they can get out i mean don't you want money isn't that the point uh then they're they're so ill-informed they're not giving the correct information and therefore not informing inmates or human beings of what their rights are uh so regardless of whether this is not whether this is scientology or not i am putting the cobb county uh police department on blast uh 
massive violation of civil liberty after violation after violation. So regardless, uh, you know, th these things are really eye-opening. And ever since I was younger, when I spent 24 hours uh, in, in central bookings in New York City for the subway turnstile, I was always a big advocate of criminal justice reform because I had these people, at least on the outside, and they were telling my mom and dad, you know, there was some issues with my dad, but he was he was the v, one a big champion in this whole situation. They had to call like a million different people, and then finally they called the right bail bonds person, and the bail bond person said, "Oh, you know, we could come and get him, no, no problem." But first they were like, "Well, you can't get bail until we photograph you and book you." So then I wasn't. So even though they're ready and they wanted to pay the bail, this is probably at eleven in the morning. Uh, there, there was no way. Uh, they were, they were saying I had to get booked first. So finally, at about noon they take my picture do my mug shot and then instead of maybe going free what they do is they have you suit up they put me in the yellow jumpsuit uh and then you're marched up uh through uh, you know a series of corridors and i believe you're marched upstairs to the the more residential jail meaning that with the expectation that you're in that jail that you're going to spend three or four days or even more uh 90 days is a maximum you can be held there uh, but until then, you can spend three or four days. I will say, everybody was asking about my safety. Was I okay? Yeah, you know, it's weird. I I guess I tend to be so personal that, that disarming that everybody, even the toughest, meanest people, tend to like me and get a kick out of me. I remember that when I spent my 24 hours previously, I was kind of the, the comic relief of the jail. And each time I was, I've been spent, I had three stints, three 24 hour, 12 hour stints in jail altogether. Each time there's always a big tough dude who says, don't mess with him. Uh, I got him because I was making that dude laugh. Uh, so this time, everybody was cool. Everybody was nice. Uh, I joked around to lie. Everybody was silly. And again, everybody enjoyed me because I was kind of so silly and ridiculous and cracked one joke after another. Uh, so I certainly, ironically, it's always the police that make me feel unsafe. It's not actually the so-called criminals, which I think is a misnomer in a lot of ways. Because again, most of those people, maybe a few of them were armed robbery, the kid stuff, that's pretty bad. Most of them were there for driving an extra day with a suspended license. Uh, uh, stupid one guy accidentally trespassed in, in, in a private apartment and, and didn't realize it. Just really dumb stuff that they're, they're here. Um, so yeah, I'm getting nervous now. Now it's about 12 p.m. And I'm getting marched up. I'm getting marched up to the subsequent floor, meaning I'm probably going to be here for a while. When we're marched up and given our clothes, I ask another policeman or another re police person employee at the jail uh, what the d deal is with the bail. And he says, you have no bail. And so now I'm thinking they, I initially had a bail, but over and over, now two employees have said to me that I have no bail. Eventually, four hours later, I get bailed out. And my dad, VIP for my dad, he called the hotel and paid for it. And so my dog was sitting safe and sound, which was like, I was so, that, that was honestly like scarier than getting put in jail. Dude was like, the, the, I get a little teary eyes thinking about it. It was like the fact of having my dog like go off to a shelter. Like that, that was the scary part more than anything, uh, was like, I was so scared about the, like, I, I'm tearing up just thinking about it right now. Um, that's like, that was the number one. I was okay for me, but it was like, I was so scared the dog would be put in the shelter. So VIP to dad, dad paid for it. Dog was laying there. I think he said, uh, do not disturb. And then finally, when I got back to the, uh, when I got back to the hotel room at 5 p.m., Dog, did, dog was amazing. He didn't even uh, uh, pee or poop anywhere in the room, and he was in the room by himself for 16 hours. Thank God I left the air conditioning on, so he was he was okay. Um, but yeah, very scary, very scary experience. And another thing that I want to note is, and this is why I think all of this might be a setup by Scientology. So I'll, I'll uh, give the examples, or uh, we'll take a look at some of the connections. First, let me pull this up, uh, and I'll read directly to you. And then once I edit this, I'll also put this on the screen. But I want to—I want it. This is what gives me the thirty-five percent chance that maybe Scientology—that uh, maybe Scientology was responsible for this. So here are two articles in 2019. This is uh, this is from Fox Five Atlanta. Uh, Cobb County Police Department joined a glowing, growing list of departments, and I'll put this up on the screen, that will no longer arrest people for misdemeanor marijuana possession. This was written in 2019. This is all because hemp is now legal and law enforcement says there's no certifiable test. Yes, so you could get the Delta 8 stuff in Georgia. In Georgia, can tell the difference between hemp and marijuana. 
All departments will still make arrests for felony amounts of marijuana, which I did not have. That's anything more than an ounce. Remember, I had under a quarter of an ounce. So again, man, uh, this was officially an edict issued by the sheriff of Cobb County in 2019. This is when things were less legal. 2019, that was five years ago. And I thought, to give them the benefit of the doubt, I, I thought that, uh, to give them the benefit of the doubt, I thought, well, maybe there was a reverse edict or the police decided to announce that he would start, the sheriff decided to announce maybe in 2021 that he would start arresting people for marijuana. There's been absolutely no change in that edict. There's been no update. There, and there have to be an illegal announcement saying, we're reversing ourselves. We are now arresting people for misdemeanor uh, under an ounce marijuana possession. There, there was, there was absolutely no update whatsoever. So this is, it's a, what Officer Moore did after I was completely compliant the whole time. After he thanked me for being so compliant and pleasant to deal with, he decided to put me in the slammer for 16 hours, which is not supposed to happen. Uh, so that's very, very, very bizarre. Uh, you know, is a Scientology is doing? I don't know. Again, I still think it's a 35% chance. Here's another reason why Scientology might be responsible, though. They have a, they have a church in the county, in Fulton County, just south of Marietta. They have, uh, it's, an, it's an ideal org. At their opening, this is way back in 2008, at the opening, they honored various members of the Atlanta Sheriff's Department. Now, Cobb County is different than Atlanta. Cobb County is the neighboring county of Fulton. Fulton County, I believe, is where Atlanta is. So do they have the direct relationships in Cobb County versus Fulton? I don't know. But I will say that Scientology's church is in Sandy Springs. Sandy Springs is north of the city of Atlanta, but technically in Fulton County, but very close to Marietta. I want to say Sandy Springs is about a 15-minute drive less than that to Marietta. So... Marietta's northwest, Sandy Springs is like north, north central of Atlanta. They're not far from each other. Uh, so the police connection, and I'll, I'll show you some stuff and, and put it up there too. Uh, but there's, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of efforts to, to honor the police with Scientology. So here you go. Oh, oh, well, yeah. So here you go. I was just looking at this because I, I forgot what it said. So, right, here's something from Patch.com. That's a local uh, uh, feeder. They're pretty reliable. Church of Scientology, this is way back. This is 2019, so this wasn't that long ago. Church of Scientology Atlanta honors Sandy Springs Police Department. Church of Scientology Atlanta celebrated Red Ribbon Week 2019 by honoring the local Sandy Springs Police Department. Um, for the fourth consecutive year, the Church of Scientology honored the Sandy Springs Police Department during Red Ribbon Week. Um... Well, that says a lot. There's a relationship, guys. There is a relationship. There is a relationship not far from where I got arrested. Scientology knew where I was. The dude the day before mentioned that I had warrants. And then, hey, he created a warrant. There's not going to be a warrant because I'm going to go to court and answer the charges. Um, but, yeah, I wanted, I wanted, I, Scientology maybe thought if I was paranoid that they'd shut me up. They're not going to shut me up. Um, and, and listen, Again, I still think it's a 35% chance. I still think most likely this is a coincidence. I will say the officer said there was a, uh, a report of uh, car break-ins at the, the hotel, which is why they found me. Although, if they're looking for car thieves and I wasn't thieving anything from any car, why would they arrest me? Um, so a very, very bizarre situation. I will say this. If, it, if it's Scientology, I'm not going to stop fighting against them. I'm going to go to L.A. I'm going to cover all these trials. Jacob Harkey has been doing a great job on the grounds. I'm going to connect with him. And uh, we're going to also kind of tag team as the further motions go along. But, yeah, uh, I'm not afraid of this, man. You know, I, I've now been a slammer three times. Nobody beats me up or does anything horrific to me in the slammer because most people find me pretty funny and I can handle myself amongst all different types. Of, I've traveled my whole life in the grittiest places of America. And to me, it's been fascinating. You meet some cool, interesting people. So that's not, I don't fear for my safety. Uh, I will always fear for my freedom. I'll, I'll be very careful, uh, but I'm not going to stop and I'm not going to shut up. And listen, if there's anything that comes out of this and I, and guys, I have a GoFundMe. I'd be honored if you could donate because I'm, I would like to pay somebody to investigate a lot of this and see if there's a lawsuit. Uh, also, if you want to, uh, help with the GoFundMe, that would be a huge help only because I plan on covering Scientology and I want to get, uh, I want to have an emergency, emergency 
batch of cash in case I get put in jail again for whatever reason so that I know somebody local or I could hire a pet sitter and say, hey, th here's my dog at this address. If something happens, I'm going to call you and here's $200 or something so you can take care of the dog and make sure he doesn't get put in a shelter. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to have an emergency. I don't have an emergency. Again, my parents are all very helpful, so that was a big help. But I don't have an emergency reserve. So if you do want to have donate to go fund me, uh, or buy me a sticker or buy me coffee or whatever option I have uh, that is in the link. Uh, but yeah, so I, look, I mean, if there's some corruption that could be exposed and there could be more press and more attention on the evils of what Scientology does and their habit of having their fingers in the pockets of many different city police departments, then that's a small sacrifice that I would make to expose this church. And they're messing with somebody who does have some connections, who have parents who are willing uh, to hire an attorney. So they decide to mess with the wrong person. So the more, the more, the more, the more they like attack me, the more I want to continue fighting to expose them. And it's a little, you know, I mean, honestly, like it's a compliment. Like part of me, like if Scientology is this offended by me, like it kind of turns me on, right? Like who doesn't like a little BDSM or even a little BSDM? for David Miscavige. Uh, so bring it on. Bring on the BSDM, BDSM. Bring it, or whatever the acronym is. Bring it on, uh, because I'm not going to stop. And it's kind of thrilling and kind of exciting, in a way, uh, to be targeted like this. And in, 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 in some sense, it's kind of the great privilege and honor of my life. And I think a journalist is not a real journalist until he's gotten shit back for trying to expose the truth. That's when you know, when you've rattled some people in power, that's when you know that you need to be continuing your mission. That's when you know that you are on a, an authentic journalist who purely cares about exposing the truth. It's, it's your certification, your certification. That's when you know you're not the usual mainstream journalist who takes orders, but who actually cares about exposing the truth and helping people. So if Scientology was responsible for this arrest, then great. They created the fire in my belly for me to fight them, fight them. Just as, again, they could have, when I got fired as a news anchor for talking about Lisa Marie Presley, they could have just said, suspend the guy without pay for a month have him never talk about Scientology again, but he can keep his job, I would have. But they created an enemy out of this. And they still keep trying to push me. They think I care about my image. Like, guys, I'm a pothead. Okay, I like... And look, if some of you don't like marijuana, respect, and you're welcome to unsubscribe. And I understand there's a difference of lifestyle opinions and, and values and, and more power to you. And there might be a fair amount of potheads who, who watch the show and uh, we probably have some agreement on a lot of these lifestyle choices. I still feel like I'm a functional person. And, I, you know, I'm not going to try to quit pot also. I, I like it, um, and I feel like I'm functional. So um, maybe they put me on probation, they do. So also with the GoFundMe, I want to hire a lawyer to try to get off probation. I will quit pot if they put me on probation. Uh, but I really want to be get put off probation because I want to be able to uh, travel around and do everything like that. But, yeah, I'm not going out down without a fight. The more stuff, if Scientology is responsible, the more they do, the more I will push back, the more places I will go to expose them. And if my repercussion is 24 hours in jail, fine. I'm going to be a hell of a lot careful and not smoke publicly and be a lot a lot more careful than I was. Uh, but I'm not going to stop fighting them. I'm, I'm probably going to check out Austin and do some protesting over there as well in Texas. Uh, so I won't stop following them. I won't stop revealing the truth. And I do hope this video gets some traction uh, so they can realize that each time they try to attack me or anybody else who's trying to expose the truth, it gets more attention on them. It generates more negative press and more controversy for them. And then, great, you're playing into my hands. Uh, and so congratulations on shooting yourself in the foot. So, you know, guys, I'm sorry. I was Not that I have to apologize. I always say I don't need to apologize. I'm not really apologizing. But I, I do feel bad that I haven't posted in like two weeks. And that's because I've been super paranoid. I don't want Scientology to know where I am. Now I have enough distance where I'm, I'm a, a lot more comfortable. So I'll be, be uh, posting a lot again. But, yeah, guys, if you are have any connection to court reporting, to criminal justice reform to anything. Let me know. I will say the last thing is every single employee in the Cobb County Detention Center said he had they had never heard of somebody being arrested for the reason that I was arrested for for over five years. Now, five years ago is when the sheriff issued an edict to no longer arrest people for marijuana possession. So uh, there's a six, six different staff members. Like, you're here? And they're like, well, you, did he spit on the cop or curse at him? And I'm like, no, he thanks me for being super nice. All of them were shocked. Then I went 
back the next day to get my mug shot. And the guy's security was like, what's he doing? We were just chatting. And I was like, where do you get mug shots? He's like, oh, there, you want your own mug shot? And I said, yeah, I got arrested. He said, for what? And this is the security guy. And I'm like, for marijuana possession. I had like less than a quarter ounce. He's like, what? You got arrested for that? So literally, that he was the seventh. Seven, seven staff members were telling me. And I remember I was asking the, the guy whose bail I was asking about. I, he was like, yeah, it's weird you're here in the beginning. And I, I almost got to him in. Like, yeah, it's kind of mean. He didn't have to arrest me. He's like, no, he didn't. So he was mean, wasn't he? He's like, well, I can't say what. I've never heard of that happening is his answer. So weird stuff. Uh, again, if you want to help me with the GoFundMe, I want to pay somebody to investigate, somebody who's professional, to see if there's any rocks we could lift. Uh, and then potentially pay a lawyer, maybe to even try to get this dismissed. Um, but if there's, if following this whole situation in a court case and drag it out, if that, even though that might be the tougher route, if that exposes more information about what Scientology is doing, then it's worth going to court for. Uh, and I don't know. I, I think this might be an opportunity to expose a lot of corruption and a lot of hidden truths about Scientology. Again, I could be wrong. I'm 65% sure that this is just a sheer coincidence. But there is that little more than a one in three chance, in my opinion, that Scientology was responsible. So again, guys, this is a time where I really need you to comment, uh, uh, add your opinion, whether you're connected with law enforcement or, 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 or law or law advocacy or civil rights or whatever it might be. Even if you have just a layman's opinion uh, would be good. But you'll be seeing a lot more of me. Uh, I Well, I can't, I can't tell anybody where I'm going because I'm too nervous about Scientology. But we will be doing the live stream and we will be in New Orleans uh, in X days, again, I'm not going to give too many details, and I won't say if I'm left, north, south, east, west of Atlanta. Uh, they will not know, because um, I am still a little paranoid. But thank you guys for your support. Uh, you'll, we'll have a live stream with Jacob Harkey to make sense of all the court cases. Looks like there's a lot more to cover than what there was before. Uh, but yeah, man, bizarre situation. Uh, hope you enjoyed the, the story, regardless of whether or not it was Scientology and do subscribe, and again, if you do want to help with the GoFundMe, that is in the uh, description of the page. But even if you don't donate, just having you guys like, just having you guys watch and subscribe really means the world. And I've gained a nice amount, a, a bunch of new people with the Chicago stuff, uh, which I appreciate. Also, I'm going to do a follow-up with Shannon. I've been meaning, and if Shannon, you're watching this, I apologize, kind of fell off the feet. I was so, like, rattled out after the, the, the arrest. I just kind of want to catch my breath for a while, but... Uh, now we're back on track, and yeah, thank you guys for the continued support. Love you all, as always. Take care.